Um, so the, the theme, the broad theme uh, this year when we were planning it was kind of um, the challenge of undertaking international work um, in, financially, in times of financial constraint. Um, but uh, this is the third, I think, of these that I've attended. And um, actually what I'm getting a sense of is actual growing confidence um, of a wider variety of mus museums doing international work and not necessarily seeing budgetary constraints as um, uh, a reason not to undertake international uh, work. Um, and it's, it seems to me that listening to the discussions and presentations today that there are a number of common strands uh, that have um, made for that, uh, some of which have been mentioned already. Uh, as I said myself earlier, finding a strategic fit whereby uh, an argument for that doing international work is part of the mission, uh, the achievement of the museum or gallery's mission is crucial. Uh, city twinning arrangements, uh, for example, business partnerships, as I said, in relation to emerging markets in, in India or, or perhaps uh, 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 China. Uh, academic partnerships, I mentioned, you know, your, your local university, if you're not part of a university set up, um, already has a plethora of international partnerships that you might find some uh, congruence with. Um, or your strategic fit might be about audiences. Um, I was very intrigued to hear Paul uh, talk about the uh, growing numbers of Chinese tourists. Um, so your links with China there are, in Oxford's case, both to do with students, but also to do with with, um, with tourists. So there probably isn't a huge Chinese resident community in Oxford, a very small one, whereas there is a very large resident community in Manchester. We're not overrun yet with uh, Chinese tourists, though we're working, uh, working on that. There's more than you'd, you'd think. Or, of course, there's your local communities, your local diaspora communities. And in Manchester, as, as Maria mentioned earlier, we're having a big thing from 2017 about engaging our local South Asian audiences around uh, a visual arts programme uh, on the 70th anniversary of, of partition. Um, we talked about, so that's one success factor, making it crucial that you do do it in terms of mission uh, uh, fit. Um, developing relationships with individuals, making friends, and relationships with organizations that persist if people move on over time, taking the long view, being persistent, as Alexandra said, don't, don't giving up, don't, don't give up. Um, some of the best uh, projects, as we heard with cosmonauts, can be many, many years, even a decade or more in the, in the gestation. Um, and as I also mentioned before, being opportunistic, being able to move quickly when something you've been mulling over for ages suddenly comes up and there's, a, there's an opportunity to find funding to do it. Um, I think we're in rather disorientating times, actually. Many museums are, of course, under huge financial pressures. You all know as well as I this lengthening list of museums that are being closed or, under, or are under severe threat of closure or partial closure or merger or whatever it may be. Um, so the name of the game these days for all of us is about resilience. But I think counterintuitively, sometimes actually working internationally can be part of that resilience. And I don't mean because it means that there'll be lots of money coming in. I think, again, as Maria said, it's very rare and only in certain countries that you'll be able to actually make net profit out of this. Um, it's about um, resilience around meeting the agenda of wider funders. Uh, be it your local authority, be it uh, DCMS or, or whatever. And I think there's, a, there's a, actually, a, surprisingly, an increasing number of opportunities for us to work internationally. It was really striking to me that the Culture White Paper, one of the four themes, place, people, and sort of sector health, the fourth one was international. So the government is really inter interested in the way in which culture can meet international development objectives and so on. And when the white paper comes out, let's hope that leads to some greater uh, opportunities to, to, uh, and funding to do that. The British Council um, becoming, we've had, heard that organization mentioned uh, increasingly, it's becoming much more proactive in terms of uh, international working with museums. Many of us have had funding to travel and so on. So um, uh, they're a co-funder with the Arts Council of the Reimagine Re India Fund, for example. And indeed, Arts Council England has heard the message from many of us that it needs to do more to facilitate work internationally with things like the Reimagine India Fund and in Manchester as a, a way of hoping to fund our wider South Asian 
work we're putting in a bid to the Ambition for Excellence Fund for some £700,000, which if we're successful, that's a huge amount of money for developing international partnerships around, around art and, and creativity. Um, so that's not in any way a summary of, um, uh, of today. Uh, you've heard, I don't need to summarize it because you've, you've heard it. Um, those are really just my personal observations that counterintuitively, in a time of decreased resources, um, we're actually in a much more confident uh, place, I think, uh, most of us, to see the way in which working internationally can be a really significant part of our mission and can help with uh, our long-term resilience. And let's hope that that's, uh, that's something that, that continues. So, Jim, did you want to say anything more about the Natural History Museum uh, uh, hosting of it next, next year? Hi everybody, for those of you who know me, I'm uh, Jim from Natural History Museum. I have the, I suppose, somewhat dubious honour of trying to run the international activities of an institution that thinks it's about this planet and everything that's lived on it since the beginning of time. Um, so uh, that comes with challenges in itself. I think I look forward to um, working with Carol and, and the team to put together the itinerary for next year. Um, I think the last thing to say is that this time next year will be an interesting period for us in London. It's a, it's a point where we'll be um, doing rather interesting things to our Alfred Waterhouse building. I know those sorts of things always go very well scrutinized in Manchester as well. So um, I think, boom, look forward to next year. Thank you. Okay, thank you.